Good evening and welcome to Meet the Candidates, where we interview candidates that are running for local office. Uh, for those of you familiar with our platform, you know that we ask them some pretty pressing questions that the community wants to know, but we also throw in a few wild card questions just to get a whole picture of their personality. Um, our candidate tonight is none other than 8th Ward Council person, Mr. Alan Griggs. Good evening, Councilman Griggs. How are you? Good evening. I'm doing fine. Good, Thanks. good. It is good to have you here with us. Now, I, I asked you if you were familiar with our platform. You said you've not been on here for a few years, so tonight should be really fun. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. So just before we get started and with our pressing questions, something really light, something really simple. Introduce yourselves to our audience, even though they're fairly familiar with you. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, uh, I can start from the very beginning where I was born and raised in Duncan, Oklahoma. And then, uh, and then about the age of nine, I started, uh, I started working until today. <laughs> I mean, I can tell you what I started doing. You know, I started from mowing lawns to sweeping parking lots to uh, being a lifeguard when I was in junior high and and uh, and then delivering uh, drugs for a, a drugstore in my hometown uh, during high school. And then I had summer jobs working in the oil fields and then uh, started to college. And even when I was in college, I, I had jobs also there, uh, such as a campus job or working in a turkey plant, and I turned out to be the the chief tucker, <laughs> and, and that's where you put the legs, the hum of the legs underneath the back skin of a turkey, and before it goes into the frozen ice water vat. So that's that that was my job at the turkey plant, and then you know I started painting uh, in college. As a matter of fact, painting a uh, girls dorm and then I went into the army for two years active service and then two years active reserve and then two years inactive reserve and then I was then was when I went back to college uh, I was a graduate teaching assistant in an, uh, the College of Engineering at the University of Oklahoma then I started to work in industry as soon as I graduated and I was a project and development engineer in the chemical company. And then later I was a project design and, uh, and project manager in a, a large oil company overseas. And then in the end, I was a senior consulting engineer at a consulting engineering firm in St. Louis. And then I started uh, have a business, a very successful business, three of them. And and then uh, also started a new business, uh, a wine vineyard, and then uh, and then moved to Flint, and uh, and then started another new business here in Flint, uh, Knob Hill Bed and Breakfast, and presently I'm on city council, so I'm still still working for a living. All right, well. You've been, like you stated, you've been on the council for a while here in the city of Flint. You've been a business owner in the city of Flint for quite some time. So tell me, what do you believe are the three greatest strengths of the city of Flint? The three best things about Flint? The three greatest strengths of the city of Flint. Well, the area, I love the climate, but then I love the people here. Uh, the biggest strength is it was a city, you know, that was made for 300,000 people. Well, now we've only got about 100,000 people, but we've got all the amenities of a big city. My gosh, we've got three major hospitals. We've got colleges. There's so much to offer in this city. And it's it's a perfect place to come for economic development. It really is. And, and the people here are just great. That's what made me want to retire <clears throat> to Flint. Uh, I could have retired in other places, I've lived in other states, <clears throat> but this was my pick of the litter. It was Flint, Michigan, and uh, and climate. Climate is a big, I think, a big plus for our city too. Absolutely, absolutely. 
you again you're you're running uh to keep your current seat so tell us why serving on the council is important to you well uh it's it's i love helping my constituents that's what's important to me uh you know assisting them with their problems you know i have probably average four crime problems a week and probably 10 black problems every week uh that's the thing that i enjoy most about being a councilman is working with the constituents and helping them deal with you know everyday problems I'm always available. They know they can call me all the time. They know they can text me. They know I'm on Facebook. So it doesn't matter where they call. They'll always end up with my with my main phone, even my office phone and my city cell phone. It all comes to one phone the way I've got it rigged. So they just can't miss me. And that's the part that I enjoy the most. Well, since we're talking about people in the past, uh, residents have had issues with reaching their council person. Uh, yeah. Are you committed to making yourself readily available to uh, re the residents in your ward? And uh, again, I know you just said that, you know, they can reach you any time, any place, but how, how do you think that you could improve that just in case you might have missed a resident or two? Well, I did improve it. Uh, you know, the way I've got my phone system rigged, they can, like I said, they can call my city office number they can call my separate city cell phone number or they can call my personal cell phone number it doesn't matter which one of those numbers uh because it's at&t and i have them all transferred right straight to my uh personal cell phone but they can also text me they can reach out to me on uh, facebook i've even got a councilman facebook page where i you know post things especially when i see some city jobs or any other jobs uh near or in the county coming up. I like to post those jobs to let people, you know, if there are people in my ward or they know it was just, they could be looking for a job anytime or any day. And I probably post at least one job every day, seven days a week. So, uh, and I, that's how I operate seven days a week. There's, I don't, you know, it's just, that's just the way it is. And that's the part I really enjoy. All right. Uh, and you mentioned earlier, you talked a little bit about blight calls uh, that you take. What are yeah. two concerns that you have in your ward and how are you working to address them? Well, I work closely with our blight department and we have a newly formed blight department. You know, we're getting more people in it in this administration. So I know the right contacts and it's taken me these years to figure out who to contact and also who to get along with uh, in the administration, uh, deal also with the police. Um, you know, I, it's just, it's just been the, all the contacts that I've come up with, there's nothing that really catches me off guard, you know, from, uh, you know, from any crime. And, uh, like, you know, I, I do, like I said before, I deal with it probably at least four crime problems every week. And, and it's, a, you know, that's what I enjoy is trying to get these matters solved quickly and understanding what the constituents, how they feel about it and what their problems are and having compassion for them also and dealing with their problems. And you mentioned something very key there. Uh, you said that you know who to get along with. Um, yeah. In the past, council members have disagreed. It has cost a lot of valuable time that could have been spent handling city business. If, if re-elected, um, would you, how, how would you work with your other council members to avoid that happening in the future? Well, it's an ongoing thing, you know, it's the elephant in the room. Uh, We've been, people say how dysfunctional our council meetings are. That's the part that's the toughest part of my job. Uh, a lot of people call it a clown show. Uh, maybe with any luck, this election cycle, maybe we'll get some new council people in that uh, aren't prone to be like that because when it gets out of hand like that, you know, especially when we go to two, three, and four o'clock in the morning with a council meeting, that ought to be over in maybe 
two or three hours. Uh, it can go easily go 10, maybe 12 hours. There's no sense in that. It, it, it wastes city time. It wastes city money. Uh, it makes it really tough on our people in administration that have, say, been at work all day. And then they got to hang in there until two or three o'clock in the morning uh, dealing with questions to them. And then they got to go to work that next morning. It's, it's the big, big elephant in our room. It really is. It's, it's sad. And it, it doesn't put us in a good public image. And, you know, when people, especially when new companies want to come here and start a business, well, that's not what you want them to see. You don't want to put that image out there. You want to act like you're a, you know, a clean, mean fighting machine of a city. Uh, no, I don't mean like fight, fight. I mean like a well oiled, well oiled organization. And uh, right now we're not looking like that. Um, I wish we could more, but maybe this election cycle with some new blood will help. Mm -hmm. And just a follow up question to that. If it does not, um, yield results where seats change on the council, then how do you plan to uh, address the disagreements moving forward? And to say what again? Say, say it I again. said, say this election cycle doesn't yield the results you're hoping for, and everyone that is currently on the council um, that's running for re-election end up back on the council, how do you plan to maybe handle things differently moving forward? Oh, gosh. Uh, just, I guess, continue to be more tolerant uh, and more patient and uh, stay to the better end. That's what I'm doing right now. You know, well, it's... Oh, go ahead. And, you know, and trying to get along with our other council members. That's, uh, I know when I first started, I invited them all to come, you know, feed them hamburgers, but you know, it, it's it's a shame we can't all just get together as, as friends. And that would help so much. It really would. Uh, instead of a little group of two or three people being friends or another group of two or three, all nine of us should be able to sit down and have hamburgers together sometime, you know, or, or a Christmas party or a Thanksgiving party. But we don't do a real good job of that. Are you willing to extend that olive branch once again? Yes, I've tried. <laughs> I've okay. tried it twice. <laughs> I've even offered to pay for all the hamburgers. <laughs> well, uh, we've reached the point in our show where we ask the real questions. You've been in Michigan long enough, so we want to know, what flavor of Fago do you like best? What, what? What favor, flavor of Fago do you like best? Oh, what flavor of Fago? Well, I like grape. I like orange. Anything. Let's see. Does Fago have a strawberry? Red. It's red pop to us. It yeah, red pop. Call it red yeah, pop. Okay, I like that one too. I, I yeah. think of it as strawberry, but not going to think of it. it. Doesn't quite taste like strawberry. More of a bubble gum. Right. Yeah. yeah. But I like Fago. Yeah, I like Fago. And what's those uh, Michigan potato chips? Uh, oh, see, you, you already beat me to it. I was going to say, being a Michigander, you have to have a favorite brand of Better Made chips. Like, you have to have oh, a yeah, yeah. Better, better Made. Better Made chips. Oh, yeah, yeah. What's your favorite? Uh, my favorite? Just I like the regular potato chips. I really do. You know, just plain old uh, potato chips. Those are my, And they're actually better than Frito, Frito Lay, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, they're good chips. And, of course, I like Kogel, Kogel Dogs. And I like, uh, you know, uh, over the hamburger place, uh, Halo Burger. Yeah. Oh, you, you have to like Halo Burger, especially in Florida. Well, back, back when my, my wife, Diane, and I were dating, when I would drive 1,357 miles out here to come visit her, and... Uh, before I saw her, I would stop at Donna's Donuts <laughs> and get a Baker's Dozen, and then I'd go to Halo Burger and then come see her. 
<laughs> Those were my priorities, kind of in that order, you know. Hey, I think as long as you showed up with donuts and food, she was all good. I think it, it worked out for you. So, yeah. what's your favorite? place to visit in Flint. I know you, you're here all the time, but where do you like to go in Flint that just brings you peace? Well, Other we, than the city council meetings. <laughs> oh, oh, no, we, we like to, uh, well, we were just at the Soggy Bottom downtown uh, when was that, day before yesterday, I think. Uh, well, I love to go to the downtown uh, restaurants and, and the bars down there. It, it's, there's so much right there in downtown, but there's but also some in the outlying areas too. Uh, we've even been to Hale, Michigan, for goodness sake, mm. you know, and, and even bought uh, two square inches of land there. So uh, that, that was uh, that was a lot of fun and, and not a whole lot to hail either. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Councilman Griggs, as our time wraps up, I do want to ask you just a couple uh, more important questions. Um, okay. My first one is, uh, what changes or improvements could you see that the city could make overall? Well, we're getting better with blight. When we can get our zoning ordinances actually approved and we get a department that can enforce all those ordinances, there's a lot of meat in our zoning ordinances mm -hmm. and those things have been in draft phase now for over six years i knew about them for three years before i was a city councilman because of the the new business that we started here in flint and uh so we had to be involved with the city zoning ordinances and that's one thing that could really help out because it you know it says like home-based businesses what you can do what you can't do uh, it also enforces off-street parking and, and things like that was something I had added in before I became a councilman was to make sure that these home businesses provide off-street parking so they're not crowding the streets, you know, the, the home streets, the neighborhood streets. And uh, then there's, I'd like to see a, uh, well, for example, in my ward, other wards might have a senior citizen or something center. But in my ward, Ward 8, you know, we don't have a senior center and we don't have a youth center. And that's something I would love to try to, I've been kind of working on it some, but it's, that's not an easy task. Uh, I had my eyes on Zimmerman School and I hear, well, that'll never happen. So I, you know, that, to me, that'd be a perfect place, the old Zimmerman School to have a youth center and a senior center right there and something, you know, some of the, the group could get together. And, and right now, my neighbor, my ward has five neighborhood groups that meet every month. And just last week, there was an, a sixth neighborhood group added. And I'm working on a seventh one. Our neighborhood groups in Ward 8 in my ward are so strong. And they get together and they, they have like these cleanup on, on the weekends. This is, you know, all this cleanup stuff is not new to them. This has been ongoing. And, you know, they're, they're, they're 501c3. They, each one of them's got a president and a vice president and a secretary and a treasurer. And we have monthly meetings. And uh, fortunately, all the meetings on different nights, evenings of the month. But, you know, there's uh, four Thursdays and, and a Tuesday. And we just added another uh I'm not sure when it's going to be mean, but it just got formed. Uh, just hey, last week. I don't mean yeah. to cut you off, but we are just under a minute here. And I want to make sure I get this last question in. Okay. With the $99 million of uh, relief money that is going to come into Flint. What is the biggest area you would say um, that money should go toward? Well, to me, right off the bat, it would be crime and uh, blight. That's... Okay. That's two big problems we got now. If we could kind of get those, then we could start putting the frosting on the cake. But uh, you know, and we and we've got to attract economic development. But I, we might should just only focus on crime and blight, and uh, and then once we get that, you know, done or done better, then we would start attracting new industry and, right. and some. 
we know. I didn't mean to cut you off, but we've got about 10 seconds left. Uh, why yeah. should they reelect you? Because I, uh, I really care for our people. And I've, been, I've learned to do a, a good job, and I think I perform better than any of the other council people. I get I get stuff done. I don't need to carry my neighbor, my uh, constituent problems into city council. Some of the others do. Now, I do that on my own time. City council's time for business. And that's that's what I bring to the table. I've got a business background, and I've got a technical background. All right. Well, Councilman Griggs, it has been a pleasure talking with you today. Thank you for taking some time out to let the residents know a little bit more about you. Uh, once again, our guest for this evening was 8th Ward Council man and 8th Ward Council candidate, Alan Griggs. And we'll be right back with more after this. Thanks, Candace.